Simply explaining complex everyday things. How does Wi-Fi actually work? Wi-Fi sends tiny waves through the air, kind of like radio, but faster. Your router takes internet stuff, like videos or messages, turns it into ones and zeros, and blasts it out using these waves. Your phone catches those waves, reads the ones and zeros, and turns them into cat videos. Magic, kind of. Your phone doesn't just listen, it talks back. Like, play the next video. Open that app. It sends its own waves back to the router. So it's like a super fast conversation, happening billions of times per second. You may be wondering how your phone and the router don't get confused with all the other- Yeah, I agree. This has never, I think I'm just too dumb to even comprehend that. Like, I understand at a basic level, okay, it's sending, like, it's communicating via some sort of code I don't understand, and, like, the the binary numbers or blah, 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 blah. I just, even hearing that explanation, I'm still like, I have no fucking idea. You may be wondering how your phone and the router don't get confused with all the other phones and routers. I'll explain. Simple. Channels. Your Wi-Fi picks a lane, and theirs picks a different one. Newer Wi-Fi is even smarter. It focuses signals straight at your phone, like a laser. Pew pew! Can people steal your Wi-Fi? Not really because it's locked with a secret code. Only your phone and router know the password. So anyone else- Okay, this I understand. Scrambled noise. And that's Wi-Fi. Invisible waves that carry memes, videos, and your search history through the air. Now you know. How do credit cards work? Credit cards are weird. You just swipe a piece of plastic and boom. You just bought a $7 iced coffee using money you don't have. This makes sense to me. I guess I don't know how I could explain it, but like it-, it Cards have been around forever. You just fucking beep, whatever the price is, it's taken out of your bank account. Okay, not a good explanation. Well, a credit card is basically saying, hey bank, spot me $7 real quick. I swear I'll pay you back. And the bank's like, okay, but if you don't, I'm charging you interest and maybe your soul. You're not spending your money, you're borrowing the bank's money and paying it back later. When you tap, swipe, or insert the card, your card sends your card number plus secret chip info to the store's payment system. The store says, hey bank, is this person good for $7? The bank checks your account and says, yep, send it through. Or, nope. Decline. Shame them publicly. At the end of the month, your bank sends you a bill for everything you borrowed. If you pay it all back, no problem. If you don't, you pay interest. Which is basically a crazy tax for not paying on time. The longer you wait, the more you owe. Like a financial snowball that only rolls downhill. I can hear Chad GPT. That is my one qualm with this channel. It's kind of like Paint Explained as well. I believe that's the name of the channel. Paint Explained. This guy makes really good videos that are sort of like that AI-esque, but it's, it's like actually the guy. Oh, the Paint Explainer, that guy. I don't know if this guy's AI though. Maybe. I have no idea. Some cards give you rewards, like points, cash back, or airline miles. Cool, right? Except if you forget to pay and get charged interest, you just spent $500 in airline points to buy a $6 granola bar. So... Yeah, credit cards are like magical rectangles that buy stuff now, make you pay later, and charge you if you mess up. This makes sense to me, but also, like, credit cards are very... Everyone should get a credit card at a young age, as soon as you can. Which sounds bad, but debt will set you free, brother. <laughs> that, okay, that, out of context, that sounds insane, but... For real, as young as you can, you're gonna build your credit score. As long as you don't suck. No, I understand what that sounds like. No? What's your fucking credit score? Huh? I had an 850 credit score when I was like... 19. Why are people left-handed? Only about 10% of people are left-handed. What a hilarious, <laughs> complex, everyday thing to put in here. Left-handed people will never shut up about how they are left-handed, though. They will say that a million times. Your brain has two halves, <laughs> left and right. And get this, the left side of your brain controls the right side of your body. And the right side controls the left. In most people, the left brain is the boss, so they end up right-handed. But in lefties, the right brain is a little louder, so the left hand gets the spotlight. That's it. Which is, uh, right brain is creativity and shit? Or is it vice versa? I mean, it's probably more complex than that. Right brain, left brain. Left brain is like, uh, logic. Right brain is emotion. How do planes stay in the air? Okay, so planes are metal sky whales that weigh hundreds of thousands- This also makes sense to me, but I also watched all of the rehearsal season two. So like, that's pretty- that's a lot of pilot shit. You're telling me a flying tube full of people, luggage, and tiny pretzels doesn't fall straight out of the sky. 
Let's unpack. Plane's wings use something called lift, which is a fancy science word for metal sky whale. A person isn't saying that. Yeah, chat GPT detected, dude. No person is saying metal sky whale. Air pushing you up harder than gravity pulls you down. Here's the trick. The top of the wing is curved. The bottom is flat. Air moves faster over the top, slower under the bottom. This creates low pressure on top and high pressure underneath. And boom. It's all about a differential of air pressure. That I, I feel like this makes sense to me, though. Like, duh. That's just like fucking physics. But Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, I'm... <clears throat> No fucking idea. That's lift, the reason planes yeet themselves into the sky and stay there. The engines, or the giant spinny jet vacuums, create thrust. They push the plane forward really fast. The faster you go, the more air hits the wings, the more lift you get. No speed equals no lift equals metal sky whale becomes metal ground pancake. Planes fly because of four forces. Lift pushes up, weight pulls down, thrust pushes forward, drag tries to ruin your life. Those little flaps on the wings, they move to change how much lift you get. During takeoff and landing, the wings go full transformer mode to stay stable. How do dreams work? Yeah, as this video goes on, I feel like it's getting progressively more AI. Although, I would like to know how dreams work. Are straight up weird. You go to sleep thinking about breakfast and wake up like... I just gave birth to a dragon on a trampoline while my third grade teacher cheered. I don't have these dreams, dude. I have a dream that I go to write something on a piece of paper and I forgot a pencil. Like, I have the most normal ass dreams of all time. I never really have like these crazy, extravagant, insane dreams, unless I'm having like night terrors, which I do have from time to time. But it'll be like, what if your mom committed suicide? <laughs> And you see everything and you wake up sweating. During a phase called REM sleep, or rapid eye movement, your brain starts lighting up like a Christmas tree on Red Bull. See, a real guy would say REM sleep. Everyone knows that is REM sleep, not REM sleep. Your brain has a giant simulation engine built in. During REM, it replays memories, smashes random thoughts together, runs fake scenarios, and throws in your ex for no reason. It's like your brain goes, all right, time to test. Oh my God. That just reminded me of a dream I had. I had a dream. It, this wasn't like an XX, but it was like a fling I had like a while ago. And I had a dream that I went to her house and I burned her house down. I, I guess that is a bit extravagant. That's not like a very normal. Uh, no, it was an accident. It was an accident. Squash was there and he like knocked over a candle and I was like, I'm sorry. And then I ran out and fucking the whole house burnt down. <laughs> Scientists don't really know why we dream, but here are the top theories. Memory sorting. Dreams help organize your thoughts like a messy desktop. Emotional therapy. Your brain's like, let's process that trauma by turning it into a talking walrus. Threat practice. Ancient brain says, let's rehearse being chased by tigers. This does look a bit AI. Even like the image generation. Just in case. Honestly, it might be all of them at once, because your brain's logic filter is asleep too. During dreaming, the part that says, hmm, that doesn't make sense, is off. So anything goes. You can fly, breathe underwater, or fight dinosaurs with a spoon. Totally normal. Dreams are your brain's way of processing, simulating, and playing out life. What even is a black hole? Black holes are the final boss of space. Like, imagine something so... <laughs> Never mind. So heavy, so dense, so extra that not even light. <laughs> oh, what are we talking about? My fucking balls? Oh, sorry. So heavy, so dense, so extra that not even Woo! light can escape it. You shine up so extra that not even. Uh, mainly the heavy and dense part. That not even light can escape it. You shine a flashlight at a black hole. Too bad. That light is gone, yeeted into the abyss, deleted from reality. Take a giant star. Now let it live its life, burn through its fuel and get old and cranky. Eventually the star goes supernova explosion and the middle what? part collapses. But it doesn't just collapse, it implodes. It that is this. Like a cosmic sink. This guy said yeeted twice and also a uh, fucking, you know, steel whale in the sky twice. Until it's infinitely this makes more sense to me than Bluetooth. 
This creates a black hole, a spot in space with so much gravity that it just eats everything. Black holes don't suck stuff in. They pull stuff in with pure gravity. Like Earth's gravity keeps the moon in orbit, a black hole's gravity is like, hey moon, come here, forever. Even light, which is the fastest thing in the universe, can outrun it. That's why they're black. Because light literally can't bounce back out. Oh, I thought... <laughs> because light literally can't bounce back out. <laughs> At the center is the singularity, a point that's infinitely dense. Time, broken. Space, bent, like spaghetti. Your understanding of reality, gone. Surrounding it is the event horizon, the point of no return. Once you cross it, game over. No signal, Dude, I no feel like comeback, just I understand silence. this. Black holes are space vacuum cleaners that broke the laws of physics. How do microwaves actually cook food? My this one, I want to fucking know. I know that it's some kind of radiation or something. When I would get high pretty often in Illinois, I would like heat something up and I'd be like, what? <laughs> you know, I'd be like, what the fuck? No, I mean, I, und I get microwaves. Microwaves don't heat food like a fire or oven. Instead, they shoot invisible waves called, wait for it, microwaves. Fuck. <laughs> Shit, okay. Into your food. These are electromagnetic waves, just like light and x-ray, but chunkier. They specifically target one thing, water. Why? Because water molecules are tiny, weird little dumbbells with a positive side. Oh, I get it. And a negative side, like emotional people. When microwaves hit them, they start vibrating like they just heard a Taylor Swift breakup song. Just getting really chat GPT vibes from this, uh... From these bits, dude. I mean, come on. Millions of times per second. That movement creates friction, and friction makes heat. Stuff with more water, like soup, heats fast. Stuff with no water, like dry bread, gets weird. Ever microwaved pizza crust? It turns into a tire. That's why. Also, microwaves don't go very deep. Only about an inch or two. So, that frozen lasagna? Yeah, the outside's boiling. But the inside... There is a horror movie that... For some reason, I can't remember. I just unlocked another memory. There's a horror movie where someone shoves someone's head into an open microwave and turns it on, and their fucking head explodes. What movie is that? Go. Because microwaves <sighs> bounce around unevenly inside the box. If it didn't spin, half your food would be magma, the other half would still be in hibernation. So that little turntable, it's the real MVP keeping your food from becoming a crime against God. I had a microwave that did not turn uh, like, actually, right when I started streaming, uh, I had a microwave that didn't turn because the little piece fell out and I just was too lazy to get another microwave. So, like, I would eat all my meals, one half hot as fucking shit and the other half completely cold. I did that for a year. A year of my life, I lived that way. So, yeah, your microwave cooks food by violently shaking water molecules with invisible waves. How does YouTube know what you want to watch? YouTube is scary. You watch one video about raccoons, and suddenly your homepage is like, here's 87 more raccoons. Also, raccoons driving cars. Every time you click, tap, pause, rewind, or cry during a video, YouTube takes notes. What you watched, how long you watched it, what you clicked before and after, whether you liked, commented, or just dipped halfway through. It's not a website. It's a stalker with a clipboard. YouTube's goal? Get you to click. And stay. If you click but don't watch for long, no bueno. If I don't, I mean, I understand this part of the algorithm, like, it's pushed out to more people if people watch the video for longer, like, retention's like a big thing. But I will say, like, the, the hyper-personal algorithms are fucking ruining every social media. I do not need a For You page on, like, LinkedIn or something. Just show me what I'm fucking following, dude. And YouTube has gotten really bad about that too. If you go down a rabbit hole, you're fucked. Like your whole algorithm is going to be that thing. You don't have like people you're subscribed to. You don't have like other shit you were interested in like a month ago. Like it is, it is constantly what you are currently watching. What is the last five videos you watched? That's your entire fucking everything on every single social media. I cannot fucking stand it. But if you click and binge, like it's Netflix in 2013, the algorithm's like, send this person more. 
feed them. Your homepage is built by a supercomputer on energy drinks that mixes what you like, what people like you like, what's trending, what you watched three years ago at 2 a.m. during a crisis. And yes, it remembers everything. Even that video you regret watching, you know the one. YouTube also- Two girls, one cup. I think there was a period in time where you could watch Two Girls, One Cup on YouTube. There was a period in time where uh, you could watch the entirety of on YouTube before like, you know, they really cracked down. If 800,000 people who watched How to Tie a Tie also clicked on How to Adult, YouTube's like, Welp, must be related, recommends it to you instantly. It doesn't know why you want it, it just knows you do. YouTube suggests videos using a brain-melting algorithm all to keep you watching forever. YouTube doesn't care what you watch, it just wants you to not stop. If you enjoyed this video, YouTube knows you'll like this video right here. He really nailed the, uh, the animation of the mouth with the voice lines. I feel like I can definitively say this is probably a fully AI video.